All right, so Iris and I are very excited to share this plan with all of you and to highlight the goals in the plan and some of the main components in each of those goals. So prairies are such as the one that's um, about to be shown, there it is, <laughs> are uh, part of the landscape that generations have enjoyed here in the prairie state. So we're here today because we care that monarchs are declining and because we want to help. We've seen that with the exchange um, in the chat and with the polls already. So while every action is important, we can increase the conservation benefit our, of our actions if we work together. The Illinois Monarch Project was formed to provide cohesion to our individual efforts grouping them and packaging them in a way that makes the best use of our shared resources and energy. So Illinois took a little longer than many states to develop a monarch plan. And we deliberately took the meandering path because we wanted the plan to be relevant across Illinois' diverse landscapes, from urban to rural, from roadsides to nature preserves, and really to be supported by the diverse array of individuals and organizations that we're seeing here today. So our success will not only be creating breeding and feeding habitat for monarchs, but building an army of conservation stewards that defend our natural heritage. So the monarch butterfly can be found around the world, but it is the Eastern monarch butterfly that is best known for its migration every fall. So as you can see from this figure, Illinois is centrally located in the monarch's migration pathway, both northward and southward. So monarchs begin arriving in Illinois in April and typically begin their southward migration in September and October. So having that diverse diversity of milkweed to support reproduction and a variety of flowering nectar plants to support feeding of adult butterflies is really critical. Illinois isn't working alone in ensuring migrating monarchs have the breeding and feeding habitat that they need. 17 states have pledged to add 1.3 billion stems of new milkweed to the landscape by 2038, and that was done as part of the Mid-America Conservation Strategy, which you can see here on the slide. To support that regional goal, Illinois committed to adding 150 million new stems of milkweed, and those stems need to be in embedded in diverse nectar plants. So how did we arrive at that goal? Well, several factors came into play, but really the main driver was our land area. Illinois accounts for about 12% of the priority area defined by US Fish and Wildlife Service. So we selected a goal that represented about 12% of the regional milkweed stem total. So Illinois' goal of 150 million additional milkweed stems is a really big goal, and it's difficult to visualize or conceptualize what that looks like. So consider with for a moment if every person in our state planted 12 stems of milkweed, or if four milkweed stems were added to every acre in Illinois, we'd meet our goal. So we know that it's not feasible for every person or every acre in Illinois to be involved, but some land has more ability to support much higher densities of milkweed than four stems per acre, and some people and organizations have greater ability to plant or support more than 12 stems. Bottom line, as we've already heard, we need everyone to do the most they can in order to provide the milkweed and nectar plants that throughout their life cycle here in Illinois. In the next few months, we'll be convening a team of scientists to determine how many stems have been added to Illinois since 2014. That's when we start counting toward our goal and how many more will be needed to meet our goal. So we'll definitely get that information out to you as we, it becomes available. Okay, imagine with me for a minute what an area looks like when all the sectors contribute to monarch conservation. The landscape changes dramatically when agricultural producers, rights of way partners, uh, natural lands, and urban interests work together. We go from sort of a blank canvas to one that's filled with a lot of habitat for monarchs. 
Okay, we are here today because we care and we are or want to be part of Illinois' Army of Stewards for Monarchs. Based on the registration information you provided, we have a good representation across all four of the sectors and we've shown that here. In addition to the diverse representation across sectors, we have a broad representation across Illinois from north to south and east to west. So this is really exciting. We have a lot of great folks here in the room and we know that we're gonna grow participation as the Illinois Monarch Project and our plan implementation involves. At this point, I'm gonna turn things over to Iris to walk us through the goals of the plan and the main components of each of those goals. Okay, thanks so much, Anne. So as Anne said, now that we have this goal, 150 million milkweed stems by the year 2038, the next obvious question is, well, how are we gonna get there? What's required? So for the past four years, we've been working with uh, teams of stakeholders across the agriculture, urban, natural lands, and energy and transportation sectors to create this statewide action plan that provides a framework of goals and objectives and strategies and specific actions that we can take to create that habitat um, and support monarch butterflies. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to download the full plan from the Illinois Monarch Project website. Um, I'm not going to lecture you on the details um, of the action plan today, but I did want to just highlight some of the key strategies that are identified in the action plan because that will help shape some of our discussion this afternoon. So let's start with that goal number one, building an active collaborative. So first, we're committing to do this habitat conservation work together. Illinois Monarch Project was really formed around the idea of coordinating on our collective activities, finding opportunities to collaborate across sectors, and working together to do this conservation work more effectively. So we do that through consistent messaging, providing a central platform to network and sh share expertise and resources, as well as really foster participation from literally anyone and everyone who is passionate and interested in supporting um, monarch butterflies. Our second goal, goal two, is about ensuring that we're using the best available science when we're implementing the conservation actions. And we felt it was really important to bridge the academic science and research that's continuing to evolve with the actual on the ground application and management techniques that will be used to create that habitat. So we proposed in the action plan having a dedicated science committee who will help facilitate that translation from science to action and digest that information to more actionable, effective um, guidelines and, um, and, and procedures for us to follow. As a great first step, last year the Science Committee convened experts across the state to develop a statewide mowing guideline, which provides a consistent set of recommendations on how to use mowing as a potential conservation measure, but also to ensure that mowing isn't having a negative impact um, on monarchs or their habitat. Goal three is outreach and education. And it's about empowering Illinoisans to care for and nurture and protect monarchs. And we do this through targeted education and outreach. We wanna inspire everyone from ages five to 95 to be involved, to help monarchs, to create habitat. We want our leaders and our decision makers to have the tools that they need to make positive impacts and to make decisions to support resources um, and other help um, to get the habitat on the ground. And we want our practitioners, the folks who are actually creating the habitat or maintaining the habitat, be it in their backyard or along hundreds of miles of roadsides, to know what they need to do and how to do it best. So as Anne said, it's really this army of stewards that we hope to build will have the capacity um, to help us reach the goal. Goal four is about the habitat work itself. And we recognize that habitat looks different across different landscapes in Illinois, but that every milkweed stem, every nectar plant really makes a difference. This can range from a single stem in a flower pot to a patch of milkweed and nectar plants on a city sidewalk along roadsides or electric transmission corridors or between crop fields or large expanses of our parks and nature preserves and private lands. 
So not only are we interested in, of course, adding more milkweed and nectar plants, but we also want to avoid losing any quantity or quality of existing habitat. So we need to identify and protect what we already have, um, avoid accidental conversion or removal of milkweed and nectar plants, and then really focus on increasing the density and diversity of milkweed and nectar plants that are already in that existing habitat. Goal five is about monitoring. And how are we and when are we going to know that we've arrived at our goal? And we still have some work to do to, I think, better understand how we can track and report habitat most effectively um, in terms of what we're creating or what we're protecting. But there's a couple of things that we know we want to be able to do. Um, ideally, we'd like to have some standard data collection where it makes sense, where it's possible. We want general agreement on how we're going to quantify and qualify that habitat. And we want to be able to track our progress across sectors and towards any interim goals or targets that we set. And we recognize that the better data we have, the better we will be at adapting our work on the ground um, to be more effective. So in closing, I'd like to propose that we really think of this 150 million milkweed stems and 2038, this distant date out in the future, as really our next milestone and not just the finish line. We have the next 18 years where we will be creating spaces and places for monarchs to eat and rest and reproduce all across Illinois. And in taking these practical steps to help monarch butterflies, we're really helping a variety of other insect pollinators and other wildlife and serving the best interests of our current and future generations. So along with our partners here in the state of Illinois, our neighboring states, national and international levels, I truly believe we are the super generation that can help save the monarch butterfly.